Wait, what? Is that a watch that I'm milling? As you've uh, probably guessed, this is about making a custom watch case. And this project is from a viewer who contacted me back in July asking me if I was interested in doing this project. I was reluctant at first because it was stainless steel with some pretty small details. I had no previous experience with stainless steel. So I wasn't sure I had the skills to be able to do this. He also had a pretty tight time frame which is he needed to do several different prototypes going back and forth between your know, middle of August and uh, early November so that he could have them ready for two shows, one in New York and one in Germany. Because of my concerns, I suggested he might want to contact uh, Stefan Gotteswinter uh, because he's in Germany and he's an expert, he's no, he knows what he's doing. But Thomas from Analog Labs wanted to work with me for some reason. Uh, so I decided to give it a try. And what I'm going to be doing over the next few episodes, as well as some previous episodes that I had, is take you through the process of creating the first set of prototypes. There will be more videos after this, most likely, which is going from the prototype to the finished product. I don't want to give you all the details because it's not play, my place to do that, but in the description below, I will have a link to more information about these watches. So anyway, rewinding a little bit, Thomas from Analog Labs sent me a small set of samples of different watch cases that they were thinking about making. And he came out to visit in August. Um, we went through all of them, talked about the different strategies that were possible, uh, brainstormed about which of the watches we wanted to start with, and then chose this one. So then it was time to figure out how I was going to mill these and begin the process. This is uh, what I started with. These are the parts that uh, Thomas sent. You can see they're 3D printed and they have extra material there for on the surfaces that need to be at precise locations, dimensions, etc. So that's what I need to mill off. And then this is the back right here, which is going to go on this section there. So the first thing I needed to do is to figure out the order in which I wanted to perform the operations. I need to mill material off the back. I need to mill material off the front, including the curved areas. I need to mill this shelf here. And then I need to mill this inside diameter here. Likewise, on the back, I need to mill this surface, this surface, and this inside diameter. The final thing is I need to drill some holes here for the strap uh, clips. And also I need to drill a hole here for the stem and the, uh, the stem tube. Uh, I also need to mill this to the right dimension because uh, this is a little bit uh, proud of where it needs to be. On the back, I need to uh, cut an O-ring groove as well as uh, drill a bunch of holes for M1.4 screws. So there are a lot of operations and I looked at this for a while and then finally decided I was going to start with an inside diameter clamp on this surface here. So it would go down here and I would mill the back first, including milling the inside diameter here because you know by clamping on here, I'll have plenty of clearance to mill this inside diameter. Uh, another thing to think about is how to clock this to make sure that this is aligned correctly. You'll notice that there's a feature in here. So I cut a slot here. And so the idea right now, this is a, a tight fit. Um, I have found that uh, there's some variation in the diameter here. Um, so it takes a little bit of work and a hammer to get this started. But uh, once it starts, then the, the slot right there ensures that this is pretty close to the right position. And it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but I do want to get it pretty close so that the bolt hole or the screw hole pattern does not look like it's askew. Once that inside diameter is milled, then I have a surface here I can use with the second inside diameter clamp to hold this in place. I'm going to need to make sure that this is in the correct location 
which I think I set to this. And I'm going to show you how I, uh, a trick that I learned for making sure that I do that. Then I can use that second inside diameter clamp fixture also in the fourth axis to drill these holes, turn around and drill heat these holes. At least uh, that's the idea. Now for the back, um, it's uh, also pretty straightforward. I need to mill both of these plus the inside diameter and that is going to require one, two fixtures, but uh, three setups. So let's get started. So I ensure that I put this back into the vise in the correct location, I should say orientation. I have a little uh, dimple that I put there with a spot drill. And that is always going to be the back left. And that way I know I have this in the correct orientation so that the slot here for the noon part of the case will drop into this and I'll have the correct alignment. So in a uh, previous episode, I, I milled this fixture with a shoulder here uh, so that it would register this in terms of making sure that it was already all the way down on that shoulder all the way around. So the registration in terms of the Z registration would be based on the surface and not based on the inner feature. Now, when I first did this, this did not fit on here loosely. It was too tight. So I had to reduce the diameter about two thousandths inch of an inch at a time until this had a slightly loose fit. And now that it does, I can kind of feel the two limits of the slot that I have milled in the fixture for the noon mark here. The noon mark, because it's 3D printed, isn't an exact width. There is some variation. So I milled the slot a little bit wider than it needs to be. And that's where I kind of feel this and then I want to come back to where it's in the center. Once I've got it there, then I just take a dead blow hammer, make sure it's down all the way. And then I want to tighten this a little bit. And then make sure it's all the way down. That sounds good. And then I can really tighten this. The way I've set up my uh, machine is that I use the first roughly 13 tools and I keep them standard. And then there are tools that are job specific. To keep track of that, to make sure I don't make a mistake, I've started to put uh, comments into the cam. I, I add these directly in Fusion 316, so three, these are three different lines as you can see on the screen, in Fusion 316. So when they're in Fusion 360 and I output the uh, G-code, I get this, which is these three comments. So this tells me that I need a 1.1 millimeter drill in T16, tool 17 is a quarter inch flat end mill, and T18 is a key seat cutter. So that means I can make sure those tools are loaded in the machine before I start this program. The bottom has about one millimeter extra material, so I'm using a quarter inch diameter end mill to remove all the material on the bottom. And I decided to do it in two passes and be a little bit conservative because I wasn't sure how rigid this setup was, but it turned out to be pretty rigid. This is the uh, finishing pass, which is moving a thinner amount of material so that it gives a better surface finish as it's uh, removing the material. This uh, is going to show you just how fast the rapids are on this machine when it's uh, really going full speed. Uh, it's both impressive and scary to watch that. This is finishing the curved part of the, uh, the lug. Now it didn't clean this up all the way because the thickness of the material was not enough in this section but it's at least cleaning up the part that's uh, closer to the back. This is uh, roughing out the inside diameter that's going to hold the, the watch movement in place. And it first uh, roughs it out, and then it does a second pass to get the hole to the uh, correct dimensions. Left a little bit of a burr, so I'm using a chamfer mill to cut a two thousandths of an inch chamfer on it, which is basically just removing that burr. And then we can use the same tool to spot the holes for the six uh, holes that will be tapped and 1.4 for the screws.
I was pretty nervous about using a 1.1mm uh, drill to drill these uh, holes in stainless steel, so I got some carbide drills and they performed beautifully and I didn't have any problems at all. This is cutting the o-ring slot using a 1 32nd inch diameter ball end mill with uh, multiple passes so that I don't break the tool. But this one tool was able to cut the slots for all six of the watchbacks that I made. The watch movement is held in place with some case clamps that uh, need to go into a slot in the side of the case. So this is using a key seat cutter to cut that slot and the slot is only 20 thousandths of an inch uh, tall from the top to the bottom and this had no problems cutting that at all. This is after the first setup. The bottom is done, except for tapping the, the holes, which I decided to do separately just to be on the safe side. Uh, for production, I would want to rigid tap those. These are 1.1 millimeter holes, which is the right for tapping for M1.4. Now, you may notice here that this didn't completely clean up, and that's because they need to make the uh, 3D parts a little bit uh, taller here so that there's more material to cut away. There's also a little bit of a gouge there. Uh, that's something where I need to add a surface to constrain the toolpath uh, because this may not be clocked exactly correct, uh, also because of other variations. I don't want to come down the sides. I just want it to do this surface here. That's something I'm going to change for at the top when I do these edges here, so I won't run into the same issue. There are a couple of other things that are interesting. You'll notice that uh, there is some uh, metal left over here. This will come off fairly easily. I can just pull it off with my fingers. But what I'm going to do is uh, probably take a fine stone or something uh, to clean up the edges and make sure there are no burrs after I'm all done. There is a lip down here, as you can see, which is one side of holding the watch movement in place. And then there are some slots here that will hold the case clamps. And so there will be two case clamps, one there and one there, that hold the movement in place from the back. So the movement will be fully constrained and won't be able to move up and down. All right, so this is finished. Now it's time for the next fixture. This is uh, the start of making the second inside diameter clamp that's going to hold the case when I flip it upside down. So first I'm making a pocket for the inside diameter clamp that will hold it rigidly in place. And then here this is finishing the outsides of that clamp. There are three screws that will hold it in place. So this is uh, cutting the initial starting point for those screw holes and then drilling them all the way through. And finally boring the hole for the ID clamp screw. Time to assemble this with the, uh, the smaller fixture. This is creating the shelf that will precisely hold the watch at the correct height using the inside diameter we milled in the previous step. And it's also set so that the outside diameter of this will fit correctly on the inside. I mentioned that on the back I ran into an issue where the toolpath was going over the edge. So what I've done for the top is add these surfaces to constrain the toolpath. So if we look at the toolpath, for example, uh, this one right here. You'll notice that I have selected these in the uh, avoid touch surfaces and I said touch surfaces and what this says is that the toolpath should touch these surfaces in addition to these surfaces here. Uh, actually it should be like that. And you can see all of those surfaces are selected now. So if we look at the toolpath that's generated it's not going down the sides. 
so it's not going to gouge these areas here. And so that's going to be exactly what I want. I've used the uh, same trick again to embed some comments into the program so I know which tool needs to be where. And I do need to change tool 16 so that it's a bullnose and mill. The other thing is um, this comment right here, it says stem in front. That's to remind me of the orientation for the case so that I put the stem in the front and that will put the uh, 12 o'clock here, let me show you. So if I put the stem in the front, that will put the 12 o'clock uh, on the right side, the 12 o'clock mark, because I need to mill a little bit of uh, that off as well. The case fits on this fixture quite easily and then bottoms out, but uh, I can rotate it. Again, stem in the front. And so what I want to do is bring in a, an indicator and uh, basically check the two lugs and use the two lugs to make sure that it's uh, straight this way. So I pulled out my uh, tenth indicator and I put a uh, wide tip on it. Uh, because of the texture on here, uh, if I have the sharp tip, it'll, there will be variations it'll pick up from the differences in the depth of the texture. So I want the, the flat tip to average those out. So what I'm going to do is now use the machine in a hand jog to move the indicator in place. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit better to make sure it's right straight on. And I'm going to give this uh, a little bit of A grip. Yeah, there we go. So it, it doesn't move quite so easily. Okay, so now I'll move it into the Y and I think I'll try to get it on the end right there because it is curved in there. So I want to get it where it's more flat. So I'll move the Y in again. Switch to one thousandths of an inch at a time. And then I'm going to move around two right there. Let's see. Let me think about it. So I'm going to set this one so it's on point zero 0.01. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this out and move across. And see where we're at. Okay, so I can tell that uh, this needs to be probably about there. We'll see how close that is. All right, I've got it uh, clocked in pretty well, I think. Um, I mean, because of the texture, as I say, there is still some variation. So right here on the end, you can see it's, it's moving around a, a little bit because of the variation in texture. Um, but this is on point zero 0.01. If I move to the right, it's pretty much the same. That's, as I say, this is about as close as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten this down and take this out. Okay, all set to go. Here I've switched to a one quarter inch diameter end mill that has a corner radius. The nice thing about the corner radius is that it will give me much smoother surface finishes, which is important when I'm doing the curved part of the lugs. Here it's doing the curved part of the lugs and uh, you can see I have the step over set fairly small so that uh, the ridges or the scallops uh, are going to be as small as possible. And then these can either be left as is to give an interesting finish or it can be uh, sanded and then brushed or polished. This is uh, roughing out the inside diameter that's going to hold the, the watch movement in place and it first uh, roughs it out 
And then it does a second pass to get the hole to the uh, correct dimensions. Using a 1 inch diameter flat end mill to clean up the noon mark. Cleaning up the flat surface at the bottom for the dial. And then a very small 2000s uh, edge break to clean up the burrs. So I'm going to end this episode here with the finishing of the first two operations on the case. Next, I have several different more videos. Uh, one of them is going to be taking the fixture that I used to hold it in place for this last operation and modify that fixture to also work on the fourth axis where I will be drilling the holes and cutting the, the hole for the, the stem as well. I also need to do the back which will be another fixture and three more operations. And then once that's all done, it's going to be time to assemble the watch. Talk about uh, what I learned and talk about what we might do next for improvements and moving to the point where they can go into production. So as I mentioned before, I'll put a link down below to the Analog uh, Time website, which is the, the website about this watch. Uh, this is not my watch. I'm simply doing work for them. It's been really rewarding. It's improved my skills a lot. I'm learning a ton, so I'm really enjoying it and uh, looking forward to future collaboration. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you next time.